some friends we can co-host. We have Rachel Compass Duffy, Pete Hexeth, and Will Kane. Good morning to all of you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So Rachel, I'll start with you because you're, you lived in Wisconsin for a long time. Your husband was a congressman there. What's important to the rural voters? Well, I actually lived in Wausau, Wisconsin, and <clears throat> know a lot of people there. Look, they're they're releasing, uh, they're in, embarking on their rural strategy. This is their big deal. And Politico just admitted they don't even have a rural policy uh, platform. They haven't released that. So their whole strategy is just send out, deploy Tim Waltz. And I know a lot of Midwest men from Wausau, Wisconsin, and none of them would put tampons um, in little boys' bathrooms, and they probably have some pretty strong words for anyone who did. And they all have guns, but they don't just use those guns for, you know, hunting. They use it to protect their families, ultimately. And when Tim Waltz, um, in the state just next door, was in charge of protecting Minneapolis, he failed to do that. He doesn't have a paternal bone in his body. So I think this whole white men for Kamala and Tampon Tim thing is not going to work in Wausau, Wisconsin. Yeah, Pete, you just moved down to Tennessee. You're in a rural area. Yesterday we interviewed these farmers mm -hmm. in North Carolina and they said feed and hay and machines, among other things, are up. There's the prices have skyrocketed, so they're not making as much money. But Kamala Harris says that Trump's policies will leave rural America behind. What's your reaction? Well, that's just a made up statement, made up, made up political statement. There's a reason rural America has gone toward Trump over these past uh, multiple elections is because he reflects their values. You see, it's not just go pander to farmers uh, with an ag subsidy anymore. It is what do you stand for? Have you allowed an invasion of our southern border? All the things that, that, that uh, Rachel laid out. So it, the, the, we always talk about the gender gap, men and women. Well, that, that may be real, but the urban rural gap is huge. It's the biggest one in America because it's all about core values. God, family, guns, the things uh, a lot of rural voters care about. By the way, Tim Waltz represented Minnesota's first district, a rural area, for years. He was a so-called moderate. Then when he ran for governor, he switched his position on guns, switched his position on Obamacare, switched his position on Somali refugees, so he could cater to the urban yeah. liberal base. And guess what? His district has gone uh, for Republicans substantially. So he's not even a good spokesman. Well, he knows, he knows that's how he wins in, in uh, Minnesota. I mean, that was the only state that didn't go for Ronald Reagan. Um, so, Will, let me ask you about this. The, the polls, CBS polls show Harris is up 51 points to Donald Trump, 49 in Wisconsin. There is a four-point margin of error. And then for the presidential preference in Pennsylvania, they're tied, both at 47%. Why is that? I would think rural voters, you know, I think rural, I think South Carolina rural, and you find more conservatives in those areas. Yeah, well, but I think those are statewide polls, right? AC, that's not just among rural voters. That's Actually, true. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that that's statewide. So my, my suspicion is it would index more favorably for Donald Trump, both in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin among rural voters. Mm -hmm. But I'm with you on one thing when it comes to South Carolina, Ainsley, and Texas, and I'll leave it up to Rachel, although she's told us today, but the Tim Waltz jazz hands and high kicking tour rolling into Grayson <laughs> County, Texas, wouldn't truly really be the kind of off-Broadway production that everybody's ready for down in Sherman, Texas. Maybe not in Wausau, Wisconsin either, but I wouldn't know I'd make that my special envoy for rural America. And if he's gonna take this production all across the country, I have a few suggestions for his uh, tour stops. He could stop in Springfield, Ohio, and talk to them about the impact of his potential immigration policies. He could stop in Aurora, Colorado, or even if he wants to stay exclusively in Wisconsin, Prairie du Chien. You proud of me, Rachel? I got it right. Prairie du Chien, <laughs> yes, Wisconsin. Yes, he could stop there yes. where Trinde Aragua has made, has started to commit crime. Mm -hmm. And by the way, while we're talking about alpha males, I'll never forgive Pete, and Brian for that matter, for making me wave on TV. I just waved on TV. I've already got the text. I'm so <laughs> Wouldn't wave. Never wave on TV. Yeah. <laughs> Pete and Rachel it was a Tim Waltz jazz hand wave. Yeah, it was Pete and Rachel. He was on the Kirby couch with me uh, what, last week. It was right after something. It was after the DMC. And he was imitating Tim Waltz with jazz hands. He said, my coaches never did that. They never That's kicked true. me in. All right, who's coming, who's coming up on uh, the weekend show? Uh, we've got we've got a great weekend show coming up. Uh, Sam Brown is a Nevada Senate candidate. We've got the Yang Gang showing back up. Really interesting what he thinks about the current state of the presidential race. And then, of course, we're promoting the big new kickoff on Fox Sports. It's going to be Wisconsin at, or excuse me, oh, it's, uh, I don't know who's at where. Wisconsin at Alabama or Alabama at Wisconsin. We'll find out. Tune in. Join us. All right. Good deal. We'll be watching. Thanks, y'all. Have yeah. a good weekend. All right. You got it. Okay. Trump.
Bye.